Welcome to the Potter Blog site, March 31st, 2014. Today on the Federal Register, the United States government is announcing that they're releasing, giving an exclusive license for a Ebola vaccine based upon the rabies virus. And we have a link to this on our blog post, and we go into a little bit of detail and analysis here. Basically, just in time for the most recent outbreak of Ebola in Africa, which potentially has already spread into North America via Canada, the National Institutes for Health is licensing a rabies-based Ebola vaccine produced by Excel Bio. Um, and the way this rabies-based virus uh, vaccine works is they take the rabies virus and they modify the exterior coating surrounding that virus, it's called an envelope, to include uh, Ebola proteins. And then they make two versions of it. Uh, one is a killed virus, which they're planning on giving to humans, and they believe it'll confer protection from all medically relevant uh, filoviruses and rabies. And then there's a live attenuated version, uh, which they're going to give to uh, non-human primates. So, you know, if it all works as planned, the person va who's vaccinated is going to be protected from rabies and Ebola. Of course, such things often have unintended consequences. And we'll make a wager that giving live attenuated Ebola modified rabies vaccines to wild non-human primates in Africa may result in some unusual and deadly selection pressures. Now, the other thing to be aware of here is that this isn't just a standalone situation. Uh, as we've blogged about recently, the U.S. government is is showing a major concern for a devastating zero-day pandemic exploit. Uh, this has started in, in basically around the time H7N9 uh, started rearing itself. But uh, basically the U.S. government has done five things recently. Uh, again, they've released uh, more federal contracts in support of these things. Uh, the Centers for Disease Control is upgrading capacity and capability at quarantine stations throughout the United States. The United States government is prepping the uh, CDC and HHS and others to relocate and continue operations within 12 hours of their primary operation locations being wiped out. The United States government is also now maintaining a year-round stockpile of vaccine producing eggs for the sole purpose of rapidly responding to zero-day threats. And uh, as part of that, they're going to also be continuously producing candidate vaccines throughout the year. Now, this most heavily hits for flu-based, uh, pandemic flu-based viruses, is basically the ability to try to respond as fast as possible. Uh, CDC has also accepted an unsolicited proposal from Genentech for a nationwide proprietary antiviral distribution network. And the United States government is tying in all pandemic operations and public health operations across all levels of government with law enforcement via the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, basically going through state fusion centers. It's just a big old C4ISR compilation of, of capability that uh, type of thing that hasn't been seen or tried in organizations since uh, since the government started getting ready for World War One, basically. But uh, you know, the only thing we really know for sure is that the biomedical industry is getting a lot of money and near-term job security thrown at it via taxpayer dollars. And the important thing to remember is that kind of money is not spent with some sort of medical mandate being forced upon the citizenry. And even though we haven't talked about it yet in our blog post, um, just today in another uh, Federal Register notice, um, the United States government is uh, basically setting out the rules and regulations by which they will uh, reimburse people from injuries related to uh, pandemics via government forced action. We'll put a link up to that in our uh, blog post here in a minute.